Discord. Perfect. Um, so today we're going to be hearing from two presenters about automated library services. Um, each presenter will do about a 30 minute presentation and then at the end we'll give them an additional 15 minutes to do a QA. and a um, And then a short break for another 15 minutes and then we'll come back for our second presenter around 1030. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and then we'll address them during the Q&A later on. And then we also encourage everyone during the Q&A to turn on their mics and go ahead and ask your questions. Um, today we have Michael from Unique. Uh, Michael is the Director of Content and Communication and he'll be covering how Unique interacts with patrons at various points through their journey. Um, starting with finding the library using Unique Mover services using regular communication to expand patron involvement, such as message B, and then um, answering routine questions through services such as patron services, calls and chats, and then special services like curbside communicator and data services. So Michael, whenever you're ready, take it away. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Amna. Good to see everyone. Uh, it's been a while since we've had sort of this video conversation. Um, and it's uh, I'm seeing a lot of names that I recognize as well. So it's it's uh, good to see you again. Um, yeah, the, the main things that we're doing here at Unique are all about increasing staff efficiency and patron engagement. Um, most people really know who Unique is already. We've been working with you for close to 30 years. Um, we're a longtime trusted partner through our material recovery program. Most libraries have used us for a very long time and continue to use us. We are patron communication experts as well. Um, the, as far as I know, we are the only uh, vendor that libraries trust to have actual person-to-person -person conversations on behalf of the library with the patron. So uh, it, it says a lot about our team, our training, um, and just the level of goodwill that we've earned with you over the years. And we're really quality focused, uh, innovative, and a pretty fast moving team in the various things that we do. Um, I'll speak a little bit more about that as we go through this presentation. Um, the, the main things that I want to talk about here are different ways that, um, the, as I'm going to mention, how patrons interact with the library. First of all, starting with finding the library, we'll talk about some services for that, other ways to get people more involved and then handling the routine questions, uh, things that enable your staff to go out and do more. Uh, and then, of course, there's more things with Unique. We're always developing new items as well. Um, so finding the library with new movers. Uh, happy to showcase uh, Fountaindale here. Uh, this is a postcard that we send out on behalf of Fountaindale Public Library. I'm gonna switch over um, to a different screen here. So you can see this browser window. Um, this is the example library that I wanted to showcase. We, we know that library tax borders can be really difficult to, to manage and navigate. Fountaindale is a good example of that. Um, this is a library that we're working with in Washington state right now, uh, Mid-Columbia Library. You can see these shaded sections. Each one means something a little bit different. So they serve three different count, two full counties with an exception here um, in this black area. And then this green section up here, which is a town in a neighboring county. It's kind of hard <laughs> to figure out, you know, when, which patrons are part of the library service. So um, we, we do the exact same thing here with Fountaindale, whereas if you live on one side of the street versus the other, it's hard to know if you're, uh, if you should be part of the library system or not. So we work with them to really identify your service areas, look for people that are moving in, uh, making sure they're not already existing card holders, and then sending out this postcard that I showed you a moment ago. Um, I'll, I'll go right back to that. All of these uh, dots up here with the different numbers, I won't zoom in to keep them somewhat anonymous, uh, showcase people that are actually new to the service community that have moved in, in the last three months. Um, so we can kind of zoom in and see uh, lots of people are moving in. Um, in this section and over here in this town, they're they're growing like crazy. It says they're expected to double their population in the next 10 years. So they wanna make sure that people are really familiar with the library system. In the case of Fountaindale, um, this is what, there we go. Uh, this is what the postcard looks like. The, the front is there on the left, 
beautiful building that I love with the unfortunate maker space in the basement that you can't see easily. And then the, um, the backside there. Uh, what I like about the card is it's bulleted points about the things that you may not be familiar with the library. Um, Ebooks, movies, it's been really popular during the pandemic. That Studio 300 I mentioned, if you haven't seen the basement there, please go check it out. Um, the the bango services the the binge concept lots of kids activities and other ways to stay connected most of the libraries we work with have something very similar to this where it's different bullet points for the things that patrons may not expect with the library so they can say hey this looks interesting let's go check it out it's it's more than just books um and then the tagline there bring this postcard with your photo id to the circulation desk to get your free library card today yay free stuff um so you can come in come in. This goes out on a quarterly basis with Fountaindale, um, shows up in people's inboxes. They bring the card into the library and get started. It, it, it's pretty simple. Like I said, we compare this with the patron list so that people that already have cards don't receive it. Um, and then we can also compare that at a later date to show attribution as well to make sure that patrons, um, to, to show where those marketing dollars are actually going. Okay. Um, we're going to move Pass. So now that they're in as card holders, we're going to talk about communicating effectively with Message B. Uh, many of you may already be Message B users and just not familiar with it. So if you're part of Swan or uh, part of the Pinnacle group, you are Message B users, whether you know it or not, because uh, Message B is a multi channel um, communication format. So we're sending out text messages, automated phone calls, uh, email notifications, and um, those paper notices, the whenever you send out a bill or something like that that goes out on an actual envelope, that's being done through Message B as well. So for for Swan, for example, we do those telephone notifications. I think we do the the same thing for Pinnacle as well. Um, we integrate with just about every ILS that's out there and, and make it really simple to to uh, level up your notifications. Um, I'm gonna hop over to. Uh, my browser again, so you can see some real examples. Um, this is an example that we're sending. We send for uh, the CLC group, which is uh, Columbus, Ohio libraries that are all Polaris. This is an example of Worthington libraries, what their um, overdue notices look like. You're familiar with what library notices look like. Um, the the tech director there at CLC called them, uh, you know, the old fashioned ones kind of ransom notes, how it looks like real plain text. Um, it looks like someone, what do you say, wrote it on a typewriter, faxed it in and somehow got it in someone's email email box. Um, but this is what um, Westerville's look, uh, excuse me, Worthington's look like. Uh, every branch, what they call branch for Worthington um, Public Libraries can have a little bit of a different template as well. They consider their lockers and their, their drive up locations, uh, different branches in the system so they can really customize to provide very clear instructions about say a, a hold notice because the pickup instructions for a locker notice or a drive up notice are going to be different than an in branch experience. Um, these are all very highly customizable as well. I'm going to hop over to uh, this here, this is a, a notice that we send for Central Arkansas Library System in, uh, in Little Rock. Uh, they, they utilize two banner ads in here. So this is a, a whole notice, no nope, overdue notice, uh, well, courtesy notice, something's due and something's renewed. Um, showing an event at the top, they were really well known pre-COVID for, they have some great event space in downtown Little Rock. Um, and then uh, something else at the bottom. They change these banner ads out all the time so that you can see different things happening at the library. You can see also as in there, they have some curbside service information. Um, and these get changed out on a very regular basis. Uh, something a little bit more applicable to this group. Uh, here's Skokie's uh, notifications that we send out. Um, so showing that this is a hold notice, obviously their, their notices are much more concise. Uh, don't utilize the banner ads that we saw in the top example. Um, but they do utilize some cover art as well. This, uh, integrates really simply. So you can see, you know, here's, um, here's the pickup location. Here's when you need to pick it up by, and here's what you're actually picking up as a parent, uh, with a kid 
cover art super helpful on these notifications uh, because I don't always know exactly which items have auto renewed and which ones have not. So it's it's a good way for me to see the cover um, and know which ones we need to get back pretty quickly. Other um, examples as well, we talked about text message notifications. Uh, this is an, we send SMS notifications and MMS notifications. Um, Henderson Public Library or Henderson Libraries in Nevada. Um, this is an example of one that they send. They do integrate the, the titles um, into their SMS that's being sent. So here's, uh, you can see Green Mile Money Pit. Someone's a big um, um, Tom Hanks fan uh, available for pickup now at this library until this date. We also do MMS messages through MessageB. Uh, this is an example that we send out with Brooklyn Public Library. Again, the cover arts included um, all the dates and there's actual live links in there, emojis, and we integrate with their um, uh, with the ILS as well so that the patron can simply text, you know, these items are coming due to renew all, just text back renew all. Uh, and we'll provide a confirmation uh, one out of two items renewed or two out of two items renewed, whatever that might look like. Make it a really easy process for the patron's preferred way to communicate um, through, uh, through text messages, as many people uh, do now. Um, on this website as well, which I'll provide a link to this in the chat if you're curious, uh, just because these are some real um, examples of, of notifications we sent out through MessageB. Uh, we have uh, a swan hold notice there, just an example of what you, so you can hear what those phone notices actually sound like. Um, so like I said, multi-channel, we're sending out in many different formats, making it really easy for you to configure. These are all very customizable as well. Kind of pre-COVID, we assumed a hold notice was a hold notice. Things didn't really change very often. COVID kind of threw that out the door as people had to adapt quickly to new processes. So this uh, this button up here for modify editable fields makes it really easy for you to uh, come in here and change the language of this notice quickly. You don't have to turn in an IT ticket anymore um, for someone to actually come in here and change the wording of the notices. You can do it really quickly. Um, MessageBee is also uh, responsive in terms of providing a desktop view, which uh, for some reason it hops down here, or uh, a mobile view as well. So you can see what it would look like on your phone. Um, there, it's very uh, fully reportable as well as something that I like to talk about. So uh, we'll look at Worthington's uh, sends for the last, um, the last week in here. Uh, these are looking at all their email sends. So you can see for each specific notice type, how many were sent, when it was opened, uh, if anyone's actually clicking the links in there, opt-outs, I'll talk about that here in a moment, uh, successes and then failures. Uh, every once in a while, here's a failure down here that they had. Someone will put their email in bad. They'll put, um, you know, yada yada at gamil.com or something, just misspell something really easily. We do provide this, uh, you can see the failure button there. If we click on that, there is patron identifying information, so I won't click on it. Um, it'll show you exactly which notice failed uh, to which email address, and you can provide a downloadable report. So frontline staff can follow up with that person and say, hey, your hold notice failed. Let's, let's get your email corrected or your phone number corrected, whatever that might be. Uh, for some ILS systems, we actually uh, provide a, a bounce back uh, into the ILS, so it flags in the ILS account there. We also provide an email summary of this information, so that goes back to other <clears throat> um, staff just on a regular basis. And also, if that's something that you wanted to have rollover options, so if, say, the email failed, so we wanted to go to SMS, um, that's something that we could set up for you as well. Click information is pretty important. Um, we can see in here exactly within the last week what types of information that people are trying to find out about the library. Um, as is typical for Worthington, most people are clicking on their link in the catalog, which makes sense. So far, everything we've talked about is transactional emails, has to do with the hold um, or an overdue, something like that. Uh, hours, uh, that's pretty typical. Um, the banner ad that they had in there is a service, kind of a personal shopper service that they call library goods. Um, within 
let me hop back in here so you can see what that looks like. You can see the variety of different hold notifications in here as well. Um, let's actually take a look at the overdues. They have a first, second, and third overdue that they send, and each one kind of changes the language. I like to showcase Skokie's um, emails as well for this because they have a series of five. Um, and it just outlines, hey, you know, this item's three days overdue or a week overdue. You know, just please bring it back to the last one as, you know, at this point you have um, X balance, your card's now blocked and we we just need to get back in touch with you or if you use unique material recovery service that's the next step for you um, so you can very clearly outline that information um, this library good service within message via emails this is the only place that they've advertised this service um, within these transactional emails and staff have been really uh, happy with the level of response that they've been getting. Basically, it's say, I like this title, this title, this title. They'll send it out to someone that in the library stuff that has similar tastes and say, oh, you need to read this next. And they'll pull two or three titles, put a grab bag together for someone. So that's, um, that's how that works. Those banner ads you can change on a regular basis um, within here. So they don't have anything to replace this with right now, but you can schedule this out in advance. So whatever you want it to look like, uh, if you know your marketing calendar in advance, it's really easy to make that those changes. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, this is a brand new feature, uh, is talking about dynamic content within um, within Message B. So we have uh, this demo account here. We uploaded a list of patrons, for example. The, the idea is that this syncs with your um, ILS. You can e very easily come in here, um, create a list of uh, ILS attributes and say, we want to send an email to a certain patron type or we want uh, these certain ads to show up for a certain patron type or for people with a certain home library. Um, for example, uh, I, I know like Naperville is a multiple um, location. So you could have different banner ads for each of your three different locations showing up for based on someone's home library or uh, last circulation location. You can have different types of notifications or emails going out for people based on their circulation date. It really puts you in full control of what you want to be sending your patrons at any point in time. Uh, so, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we, we can also upload um, event registration lists and things like that as well. So you can start to see, you know, who showed up to uh, Cindy's story time at Tuesdays at 10 and start promoting different things that they may be interested in as well with their, with their kids or um, as, as parents, something that, that might be a little bit applicable for them. Um, so that's the transactional side. We also have list communications as well. List communications uh, would be your newsletters, things that you're probably using a tool like Constant Contact or, or something like that for. Um, the, the main difference with Message B is that we utilize all that ILS data. So it's not a separate database to maintain. We have all this dynamic content in there as well um, so that you can really build and design things customized for your patrons. It's not a prescriptive solution as well. So it, it's really just lets you do the things that you um, that you think are, are best for your patrons. OK, uh, that's that's diving in <laughs> through message. B. I, I get excited about this stuff and a little carried away. We'll talk about patron services real quick. Um, Patron services really deal with uh, the 80% of questions that patrons ask most frequently. Um, again, well, uh, we do this through phone calls and live chats with the goal of resolving 80% of patron outreach and letting your staff do more things. So whenever we talk about the 80% of questions that people have, they typically fall within these areas. Um, it, there's been a lot of digital media support that we've been doing. We have a, a tier two team that actually handles those types of questions. Um, Pre-COVID, we did a lot of like meeting room reservations, uh, event story time information, lots of account related questions. Um, whenever I was working in the office every week, I heard someone calling in, uh, someone repeating back, yes, last night's Powerball numbers were this. Libraries are still a source of information, especially that the kind of basic level information we want to, we can provide that assistance to. I do mention out of scope here, uh, research and database. 
there are certain types of questions that are really best handled by reference librarians, obviously, uh, or particular uh, questions that are specialized services. Um, this is a menu of services. It is not a prescriptive solution. So every type of question in here, we can route a different way. So if, for instance, um, you wanted e-media type questions to come back to the library, if you know you have a team there that's great at answering those, uh, we could do that. Research and database is a clear example where genealogy questions, there's, there's so much local information that libraries hold that we just, it's better handled by you. Um, an example of the chat window, let me hop back over to my browser. Um, can again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep focusing on your library here. Uh, Fountaindale, so um, this right here, ask a question, this is Unique's uh, chat window. Um, so I think everyone uh, knows the answer to this question. Um, but this is one that I've been using as a test question quite a bit. Um, this comes to unique staff uh, where we can actually answer on behalf of the library. So this will look like just any type of normal staff interaction. Don's been with the company for a long time. Uh, it, he's someone that people are used to knowing about. So um, very quickly, he'll get back to us. The, the idea with this, uh, with the chat,